you remember the first time that you met Chris Jericho and what your impressions were of him when you met him? Yeah, I do. Um, we we all stayed at a hotel. Well, there was two people from Calgary who lived in Calgary, but we all stayed in a hotel in Okotoks, Alberta, which is, you know, it's a, basically a bedroom community now. And it was this crappy hotel. And I got picked up at the airport and taken to this hotel. And every person I see when I get there is skinny little kid, big fat guy, like no one looked like an athlete at all. And I had no, again, you didn't have internet. So you didn't know that that's what all wrestling schools look like. Right. I was, you know, and I trained, I was in good shape. It's like, I'm expecting to show up at like an NFL camp, right. Where I'm like praying to God, I'm in good enough shape to hang. Yeah. And then I see this and because my stepdad had looked into the power plant and looked into uh, the Hart brothers, I chose Hart brothers because Stampede had a rep for smaller guys and staying in Canada made it easier. But I had went to the end of the hallway. There was a fire escape and I'm standing on the fire escape. And in my mind, I'm thinking I've made a huge mistake. This place is a joke. Yeah. So I'm in my mind going, can I change my flight? Can I, you know, I'll call my stepdad. I'll see if he can get me into the power plant. I need to get the hell out of here. And then this green beat up looking 76 Volare pulls into the parking lot and out jumps Chris Jericho. And I see a kid that clearly goes to the gym that clearly looks like an athlete. And I'm like running down the fire escape to meet this person because maybe there's, if there's someone else here that has a hope in hell, then maybe I didn't make a mistake. So I ran down and introduced myself to Chris and helped him carry his trunk of clothes and stuff out of the trunk of his car and helped him move in. And it's like, if, if not foreseeing him, I probably would have been on a plane back home the next day. Wow. I, I'm just so fascinated in life by these moments that change your life, you know, for better or for worse. Like, could you imagine if Chris Jericho could have gone to wrestling school a year before or a year later and this meeting never would have happened? Yeah. And Chris and I have talked about it because unless we both ended up going to a different school, but assuming I stayed and he wasn't there or he stayed and I wasn't there, there was quite literally no one else to work with. Like we would have been doomed because we did everything with each other and trained. Like we were, you know, we were at the top of the class and it was a big gap to who was next. And without each other, it's like we would have, I don't know what we would have done. I, I can't imagine we would have progressed anywhere near where we were. So if you're born in Ontario, you're going to college, university in Ontario, is that what brought you out west to Alberta was wrestling? Yes. Yes. I packed everything that I needed that I owned in a large duffel bag and got on the first commercial flight I'd ever taken and uh, flew to Calgary and got picked up at the airport by... Ed Langley and Brad Young. Ed was the guy that ran the camp for Keith. And Brad was a grad from a previous year that did all the instructing. That was sort of the gimmick to the Hart Brothers camp. Ed ran it. Keith took the money and a graduate from a previous year taught the class. Wow. Um, I, I taught it in 91 and 92 after graduating in 90. Wow. And you've lived in Calgary ever since? I lived in uh, Tennessee for... 10 months during my Smoky Mountain run. And I lived in uh, Cape Coral, Florida for a year during my ECW tenure. But other than that, yeah, it's been Calgary. Wow. It's amazing. And, and also Chris Jericho is still wrestling now 30 plus years later. Yes. That's, uh, <laughs> that's sort of the, 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 the running joke between us because we've, over the years have made a pact that because our very first match was against each other. We did yeah. like a 10 or a 15 minute draw. I don't remember which uh, in Pinoca, Alberta out here. And I've always contended that it would be cool, especially because we know each other still to do our last match with each other too, and have us both bookend our careers. And on one of the talk is Jericho podcasts, as well as recently, just personally, we've sort of, you know, um, what's the word reaffirmed the pact to do it. But I keep joking with him. It's like, dude, you have to retire at some point or I'm not <laughs> going to be able to do it. You know, you, you've got to retire inside the next five or 10 years, dude, or I'm not going to be, I don't want to do it at 75. <laughs> yeah. How much longer could Jericho go? The man's indestructible. 
Yeah. He really is. Like he's had so few serious injuries and he just seems to keep on going. Like he, he had the broken arm in 94 in Smoky Mountain, which never hurt. Like he was never in pain ever from it and had to take some time off because they had surgery, but it still wasn't hurt. And again, I, um, he did talk about that. He did his first, I think it was his first hiatus from WWE. His back was bothering him and it was bad, but DDP yoga fixed him up and he's never had a problem with it since. I believe he did tear an ACL way back, but was told by doctors, you're one of the few people that still has a fairly stable knee and just never had anything done about it. And he wears a neoprene on his knee and is fine. The dude's indestructible. It's, it's insane. And it's not like he's taking it easy. Like he's still a rock star on tour. He's still running the Jericho cruise. He still has the podcast, one of the top wrestling podcasts in the world. And he's wrestling all the time with AEW. Oh, it is. I, I don't remember when it was, but it was a while back. He was in like a six man with either inner circle or, you know, his, appreciation society but it was like a six man yeah and it's like he's the workhorse out there doing all the work and i remember texting him going uh dude you realize you're the big name now you don't have to do that and he's like that's just me man you know and i'm like yeah i know i'm the same way but it's uh it's who he is 